Good evening, everyone. <coughs> We're going to call to order the May 20th, 2013 council meeting. If you'll stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, as we get started, our uh, emergency management has and uh, public safety have actually two announcements for me to make. One is the best thing that we can do right now for the people of Oklahoma City and more are thoughts and prayers. If you want to go help, don't wait until you are officially called to come help. You will only be in the way. So help in other ways. Do not go down there right now and get in the way. But thoughts and prayers are what is needed now for those areas. And our second, with the weather that is coming towards Stillwater, again, our emergency management is downstairs and they've got their eyes and ears on it for us. We will know anything before anyone else. So we don't need to be worrying about that and we can worry about our council meeting. 20 yards away, we've got the best information possible and they'll let us know if we need to know something. So anyway, there's our housekeeping before we get going. Um, first thing we have tonight is a proclamation for National Public Works Week. You guys want to join me up here? Whereas public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as water, sewers, streets and highways, public buildings, parks, and solid waste collection, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction, are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, John Bartley, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, to hereby proclaim the week of May 19th to 25th, 2013, in the City of Stillwater as Public Works Week, and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public work officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Thank you, guys. I just, uh, Mayor and Council, we have several representatives here from the different public works uh, departments that we have. We don't have a, a single public works department, but we have parks and recreation, fleet, traffic, engineering, parks, mm -hmm. recreation, traffic, and streets. We also have solid waste, water utilities, facilities, uh, but this is a small sampling of the folks that really make the things happen within the city. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, that takes us down to our consent docket, and we have items A through H on our consent docket. Does anyone wish to remove any items from the consent docket? <coughs> if not, is there a motion on the consent docket? I move that the consent docket be approved. Second. A motion and second on the consent docket.
And the consent docket is approved five to zero. That takes us down to comments not scheduled for public hearing, and we do have two requests. The first is from Kelly Harris. Good evening, Kelly Harris with Keystone Engineering located at 923 South Larry. I'm here to speak to you about an agenda item later, 8B, the request for rezoning for um, 11,000 Virginia Avenue. This was before you two weeks ago, and we asked that you postpone it to this to allow us to get that covenants that we were talking about then uh, filed at the courthouse, and that has been done. I understand that the neighbors are happy and everybody is um, good with this rezoning, and again, we're requesting that you consider RT versus the RTM. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Thank Please you. feel free to bring me back up if you do. Thanks. Our second request is from Becky Teague. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Becky Teague, 1702 Glenwood Court. I, too, would like to stand here representing several people that are afraid of the storms and they're at home in their freighty holes this evening. Uh, believe me, I do have multiples behind me. But we would like to ask the Council to please vote for RT tonight on the re zoning request, and that's all that's really before you. Uh, just because I don't want to leave such an important item behind. Something wasn't accomplished. I thought it might be, but I hope that it's not snuck under the rug or kept under the rug. I really would like to implore this council, staff, or anybody to continue looking into a senior overlay district. I think, again, that it would be good for Stillwater. We market ourselves. Planning Commission and the ad hoc was not privy to that. My disappointment not necessarily is that it has, hasn't come to fruition and not a vehicle for this particular project tonight, but that it's nowhere in sight. And I think Stillwater could hold its banner high, not only to protect the seniors that we have here, but the ones that we are inviting. Not long ago, this city, the same body that we stand here, cut funding for seniors. Tonight we find it. There's exciting things that are going to come up and be presented to me. But until we can protect our established neighborhoods and the people that have paid their dues here and will pay for the, pro the project that is presented tonight, if it comes to fruition, those people need to be respected. If it can't be transparent, at least there can be some communication. Again, the little engine that thought he could didn't even try. It's not wrong to fail. Failure makes us strong. But when we don't try to do something or we fall short, it becomes frustrating for everyone. Again, I was asked one time in this body, how did I handle stress? And the point would be there shouldn't be stress to formally come and approach this bench. And unfortunately, <coughs> the people that I represent tonight have not been here once but they have been here multiple, multiple times over the last four years because they bought their homes, paid for their homes, next to infield, which is very, very important to get it right in development, but they bought their homes next to infield that has been zoned RSS, single family, from as long as I can remember 1970 when I came here as a child. I want to hats off and congratulate Joel Walker, the guy that's going to come in here and put a senior housing project on the land. Again, we're not talking about that. We're saying we're for straight zoning RT. We have put our trust in a man that we have never seen nor met, not our elected officials tonight. And Stillwater loses because of that. We can do better. I don't browbeat you tonight. I ask for continuance in protecting the citizens here and understanding the frustration and threat that people have in coming to address this, and it shouldn't be. They're threatened by their livelihoods, their home, and their safety. It's happened. Again, if, if development is going to occur here, it's not going to be pretty if it's done by deed restrictions. Surrey Hill can go out right now and protect themselves from Pecan Hill in 50 years when it becomes obsolete. That's, that's 
Berry Creek is what I meant. Pecan Hill would be Primrose. But we're not asking for protection, but we're asking for a layout from government. That's why we live inside the city limits, in order for some kind of protection and planned smart growth. And again, we didn't accomplish it. Please do not drop it. But tonight, I salute Joel Walker, the citizens of Stillwater, and Kelly Harris standing behind me, because you know what? We wanted to get something done. We have taken government out of the process. That's not good planning for Stillwater. That's not why I've served this city for years and years. Deed restrictions will be a car wreck if that's what has to happen. But it can, it will, and it has. Again, please vote RT tonight. That's the only decision. That's the only thing on your table. That's it. We applaud Kelly, Joel, and the neighbors one more time. And thank you in advance for your vote for RT. Okay, we do have a public hearing this evening. And our public hearing is to receive public comments regarding request for a telecommunications tower. Do we have good notice on this? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Ms. Dennison. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Paula Dennison, Development Services. What we have before you this evening is a specific use permit for a cell tower located at 3520 North Park Drive. This is the location of the property. As you can see, the light gray, that is light industrial zoning. Um, fairly recently, we had a text amendment to allow telecommunication towers in the light industrial zoning. As we all know, code is very fluid, and when we find that something is missing and we evaluate it, um, then the opportunity arises to make changes to the regulations. And we have done so by allowing cell towers in the light industrial district. This is also a request for an increased height for this cell tower. Um, normally, the uh, height allowance in the IL district is 75 feet. This tower is requested to be 135 feet tall. And we have the site plan, which indicates the location of the proposed tower, the lease area for it, and all of the appurtenances. The findings are that cell towers, the use and the height are allowed in the IL industrial uh, light district with a specific use permit. Um, the newly adopted C3 plan, our new comprehensive plan, does support this request because the property is identified as industrial. And um, one of the requirements for locating cell towers within the corporate limits is to look at other cell towers and see first if there is a co-location ability on those existing towers instead of putting up a new tower. Although there were two located within the required distance for co-location, the height was not adequate for this provider to locate on them. So that's why they have asked for this new tower and the increase in the height. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions, staff? Do we have any other towers that are 135? Is that what you said? We have some rather tall. I don't have all of the heights right off the top of my head, but that is something that we can get to you if you're interested in it. Any other questions? Not this time, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. We will open up this public hearing, and we have no request to speak in favor or <coughs> against. So we will open the public hearing, and we will close the public hearing and ask staff to come back up. Luckily, it wasn't a long trip. It wasn't. Okay. Planning Commission has recommended approval as proposed. Okay. All right. Any questions on the recommendation for staff? I would move approval. We have a motion a second to accept the recommendation. And that passes five to zero. And just to let everyone know, uh, all severe weather warnings for Stillwater have been canceled. So, up to date information. Okay, that's going to take us down to general orders, and our first uh, general order is the R. Stillwater presentation. As I understand it, we have here we have Lisa Navercall from the Chamber of Commerce, Stan Clark from Stan Clark Companies, and Jerry Franklin from Bank First that will be making this presentation.
Thank you all for allowing us to speak with you today about our community. I've been here for about a year and a half and I realize I am still considered the newbie to Stillwater, but one observation that is evident to our residents and leaders in Stillwater is the great passion that they all share for the community, something like I have never experienced before. Because of this passion, I've observed groups all over working on projects to improve the community. You can witness this in some of the developments that have come to fruition, fruition recently, like the dog park and the city's recycling project. Oklahoma State University campus, look how they've changed. Uh, they've invested over a half a billion dollars over the last five to six years and plan to invest an additional 250 million over the next five years. Since 2007, Stillwater Public Schools have invested $91.5 million in programs and facilities and have plans to further enhance their campus with an athletic village and partnering to design a wellness center for the community. We know that different groups have been working at pulling together plans for improving and meeting the needs of Stillwater. I recently heard Jason Peake speak about a pavement management plan that looked at ways to not only maintain our current streets, but to grow the quantity and quality of what we have. I'd like to commend Vice Mayor Hopkins, Councilman Weaver, for your recent, recent leadership in a capital improvement committee that worked with city staff examining critical infrastructure and public safety needs. The chamber has been part of a private sector group working since the fall of 2010 that has met with different users considering a number of projects that affect our daily lives and those looking to relocate to our community. These individuals all have special interest in the way they spend their time and what they do to make their lives more enjoyable. Although they represent different interests, they have the same mission of improving the recreation, entertainment, and cultural activities they desire to fulfill a healthy, happy lifestyle. What happens if we invest in our community the same way we have in our public schools and in the same way OSU has in their campus? What if we were bring to, to bring together groups from the public and private sector with a plan to address the needs for safety, transportation, and quality of life. Sixteen years ago, Oklahoma City believed and invested in themselves and funded eight major civic projects turning the Bricktown area into a vibrant, thriving economic driver for Oklahoma City. They then invested again with MAPS II renovating their public schools and most recently in 2009 by extending a one cent sales tax and investing in eight new projects including a downtown park and convention center. Our Stillwater is a group made up of public and private sector individuals who dream of a MAPS version succeeding in Stillwater. Our Stillwater is bringing together the efforts of this public and private sector with a goal of developing a plan to improve the community for existing future businesses and residents while increasing the quality of life for our own citizens and meeting the infrastructure needs of a growing city. This diverse group has explored options of what our community <coughs> could realistically see over several chapters or phases depending upon how our community grows. These projects address the needs, but also create an economic driver for our community. What could we see? Development of Boomer Lake to include an amphitheater that would provide a unique space for concerts and performances, allowing for future development to include restaurants, cafes, shops, and recreational options for families like paddle boating, walking, and biking. Addressing public safety needs, which would include the building of a new fire station on the west side to accommodate the growing population. Development of a youth sports complex, providing opportunities to keep our residents at home and participating in tournaments hosted right <coughs> here in Stillwater, creating a huge economic boost for our community. Updating and adding to our police fleet, ensuring that we were able to meet the safety needs of our community in operational and up-to-date equipment. We've had great success with the downtown bid district and the growth that we've seen here. Imagine a connector from the OSU campus drawing more traffic to this area and allowing for further development. Transportation. 
addressing the needs of our current streets and bridges as lined out in the pavement management plan by adding and improving to meet the critical needs of a growing community. The completion of the trail system master plan by adding parking spaces along the trail paths and divided areas for walkers, runners, and bikers. The addition of sculptures and fountains as well as addressing lighting and facilities. A feasibility study has shown us the need for a convention center. Imagine adding a connector to the OSU campus with this development. Also enhancing our parks, creating more open space and activities for families like splash pads, volleyball, and tennis courts, plaza space for a farmer's market to call home, a place for residents of all ages interested in all kinds of activities. These are the things we can do if we imagine the possibilities. Stan, imagine if 16 years ago, Stillwater been in the same place that Oklahoma City is now. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. That's exciting stuff. Good evening, and thank you all very much for the opportunity to present a few ideas here. Um, I'm, I can't say I'm a newbie. I think I've been here for about 42 years. Uh, celebrate 38 years Eskimo Joe's this summer, so we're pretty excited about that. But I certainly want to endorse this idea of this new investment in this city that we all love so very much. You know, and my hunch is that the time is right. Uh, we, we've all seen these wonderful examples of how uh, build it and they will come and the phenomenal success of Oklahoma City. I think the timing is right because of the strong leadership that we enjoy. These, these people right here, uh, strong city commission, fantastic. Um, Stillwater Public Schools and, and its fantastic leadership and all the things they're accomplishing today. The chamber, Lisa, you're doing just a great job. Oklahoma State University, just fantastic leadership again. Um, you know, I, I look at the billion dollars that they've raised in the last six years, it's just phenomenal. And the nearly $900 million of investment that has recently gone on or will go on. Gallagher Iberina kind of started the whole thing and then Boone Pickens Stadium adjoining it. So it's just phenomenal. Career Tech, of course, we're blessed to have the only state agency uh, not based in Oklahoma City right here. And it's just such a, you know, it's the best in the country. It's phenomenal. So it's all such exciting stuff. But also look at ASCO and Total Energy and uh, new, newly um, attracted Devon Energy to, to um, you know, our community. And we just heard last Friday that it looks like they may be here for about 10 years. It's a serious economic activity. Um, so it's all very good. It's all very exciting. And uh, I, just, I just have a feeling uh, that the time is right. I truly am a believer in, uh, in investing. And I think you all have seen what I've tried to do, uh, building a few enterprises here in our town. I certainly believe if you build it, they will come. So let's think maps and let's change this uh, beautiful community for the better and let's change it forever. Jerry. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. Thanks for having us here this evening. Uh, since I'm the banker, my portion of the program is relegated to numbers, since I have no creative thoughts whatsoever. But uh, <laughs> I, did, uh, I did want to uh, just discuss uh, with you uh, briefly the, the economics or the investment that we perceive in, in what we are calling a phase one of a multi-phase uh, plan. And uh, phase one contemplates investment in public safety, transportation, quality of life, projects and facilities for our community and its uh, citizenry. We believe core and essential uh, services have to be regularly addressed and maintained so that infrastructure doesn't fall too far behind and that we don't put our staff and safety personnel in positions of, of having to work with outdated technology and equipment. Quality of life projects and initiatives help make the community a great place to live. Investment in quality of life programs contribute to overall community health and well-being and, and can ultimately pay for themselves by growing local businesses, increasing sales tax dollars, and bringing in uh, dollars from outside, outside our community, tourist dollars, if you will. Uh, from an economic development perspective, quality of life issues consistently rank in the top five concerns of companies who are considering expanding within your community or relocating into your community. So the investment by the numbers, uh, as Lisa mentioned earlier, the numbers we've been working with on the uh, public safety and transportation components of phase one were largely derived from work done by city staff and the, and the uh, capital improvement committee, so thank you for that. Uh, these numbers, we believe, I believe, I was told were presented to the council on or about March 25th by Dr. Jason Peake, director of transportation. 
uh, during his review of the pavement management plan. Generally, those numbers included uh, about $8 million for a west side fire station, uh, which is desperately needed, uh, and it would, uh, I believe, replace station number two or potentially replace numbers, station number two, which is a little bit outdated, although very great looking on that corner. Would also include uh, replacing and up upgrading the uh, police fleet, uh, and also would support um, uh, money for improving information technology and emergency communications in the emergency communications network. Um, additionally, phase one included some discussion about an annual funding mechanism to raise money for ongoing improvements uh, to our streets, our intersections, um, our intersections, traffic signals, uh, sidewalks, and, and trails. Uh, right now, the city has fund some funding for that, but that funding appears to be appears to be short of, of improving and growing our streets and our streets and, uh, and, and uh, control systems. The estimate for the uh, investment necessary for phase one of the quality of life components at this time is just a very, very general number. Uh, we have done a lot of work, we have a lot of educated guesses uh, and assumptions, but with that being said, our estimates are in the range of approximately $20 million and those include funding for a, the youth sports complex, uh, the Boomer Lake Amphitheater project and the boardwalk and an extension of the trail system master plan which the council has reviewed. We know that uh, financing for public projects is uh, somewhat limited. Typically you're limited to geo bonds and, and uh, revenue bonds and or some sort of uh, sales tax support. And while we've looked at some of these numbers, we don't have any real specifics on that. That's part of the reason we came to the council this evening to make this presentation was to se seek your advice and counsel on whether you think we're going the right direction on these projects and then certainly to encourage your advice and counsel on how we might uh, finance these projects. So I would like to just close by thank you again for hearing our presentation. We appreciate everything you, you all do for the city of Stillwater and we look forward to uh, continuing this process and working with you and city staff to, to flesh this out and, and help it come into, come into being. Uh, with that, I would uh, close, ask for questions, and, and, uh, and encourage your, your advice and support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions on this presentation? I have one. Okay. Just to make sure I'm clear. Stillwater's water issues are funded and this money has nothing to do with the funding of water. Okay, I, Am I correct? I, yes, and I'm going to turn it over <laughs> to the guy that's responsible for backing that up, Mr. Blankenship. Yeah, the, the mayor is correct. Uh, the, uh, the water issues are being addressed uh, with funding that's been set aside from the rates. So 100% of the, of the uh, issues uh, are being addressed by uh, revenues from water rates. <coughs> Thank you. Do you have a question? No, I don't. I've heard it. Uh, just, just a comment. I appreciate you folks coming and sharing your thoughts with us. I, a couple of things that I heard that I really liked uh, express was the notion of phasing. We can't do this all in one shot and call it done. It's going to take some program planning and, and thoughtful planning as, and phasing as, as we move forward. And secondly, I'm very impressed with the list of people that have been actually getting together on their own time and talking about these kind of quality of life initiatives that, you know, we hear so much about, but we don't always take action to implement. And I'm glad to see that you've given some thought and some time to that. I see a lot of familiar faces in the audience. I appreciate you putting that time in. I, I agree with you, Stan. I think the time just might be right to try something like this. One of the things that I really appreciated about the study is that it it's brings out the economic development factors while we're still trying to improve the quality of life. And I think those are things that help us to pay for the whole deal. And I do know that quality of life is very much of an influence whenever you're trying to grow a city and you're trying to grow your, your economic base. And so I, I appreciate the fact that we looked at, that you looked at a broad spectrum of things. And, uh, I see the economic development factor being very important. I, I, I'd agree with all, all comments made. Um, what, and I think 
I guess Jerry, this is, I guess, I don't know who the question's to, but what, what I took, what, yeah, come on up if you want. That's fine. <laughs> Where, where we're at now. Response, I really wasn't prepared for questions. <laughs> <laughs> you are now. I don't think you're going to have to come up with creative thoughts. I think it's a straightforward question here. Okay. The, the private sector group has worked on the private side issues, and the public sector side has worked on the public side. That's correct. And now, it, what I heard from you is it's, it's time to fully bring those together. Is that a fair? That's correct. Okay. So what? It sounds like we need is we need to tell staff, work with a group to flesh out issues. So I know that from what I got from the presentation, what's hanging out there, we, we've got some issues that need to be fleshed out. Mm -hmm. You know, projects, what, what, what projects, what cost? Exactly. The financing of those projects, what is feasible timing, those kind of things, and that's something that's going to require city staff to be involved with. And so we, we've got some issues to get fleshed out on it. Um, time frame, what kind of time frame? We would like to uh, proceed uh, as aggressively as possible uh, and get some sort of resolution on project priority and, and financing structure and costs, I would say, in the next 90 days, 30 days pretty quickly could you could your group be Absolutely. prepared to come back with a presentation by you know into summer I, I believe that we definitely could certainly okay I think that's appropriate is that fair so or sooner we can do great. It. staff get at it is that staff what we're saying it. staff get at it okay Absolutely. I and I want to thank everyone that it not only is here but has been working on this because this could be a very important positive turning point in our city on so many fronts. The balance between the public sector side and the, the, those, those type of essentials along with the essentials of quality of life. I'm looking forward to the fleshing out of those issues so we can get to the right still water <coughs> balance for what we need for our still water. So anyway, thank you guys very much. Any other questions for anybody? Thank you. How thank exciting you. is it to be part of the process? And very exciting. Let me, let me ask a question so I understand. What the council's uh, consensus is is that uh, staff work with the R Stillwater um, group and to, uh, to help to identify project priorities, define scopes, uh, prepare cost estimates, and look at uh, how those projects might be financed. Am I hearing that correct? I would say that along with the Capital Campaign Committee because I think they've done yeah, oh yeah. A lot of work and so okay. that, that with need the to be CIP ad hoc in continuation okay. of that. Be happy to do that. Okay. I think I understand. Is that got what you need? Yep. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you all. Okay. We're in we got a few people clearing, so we'll give them a quick second. That takes us down to our second general order, the request to rezone property addressed as 1,000 East Virginia. Ms. Dennison. Thank you, Paula Dennison, Development Services. Again, just a very quick recap. This is a request to, the formal request that was submitted was to rezone from RSS to RTM. Um, you heard at the March 4th and then at the May 6th meeting that request verbally has changed to um, RT instead of RTM. This was tabled from the May 6th meeting. The public hearing was held March 4th. Again, here's the property in the hatched area, an aerial of the property. And just for your consideration, the difference between the RT, two-family residential, and the RTM, two-family and multifamily residential. Um, and we have, staff has confirmed that the covenants have been recorded with the county. 
Any questions? It has been recorded. It's been changed. Yes, ma'am. I've got the <coughs> Any other questions of staff? No, it's time to. Time? Is there a motion on this item? I move that we accept the request to zone the property RT. We have a motion and a second, and uh, before we vote, I'd like to make the statement that uh, the votes that didn't occur on prior, I know I was prepared to vote RT in March, and I was prepared to vote RT in May. Zoning boils down to what does the zoning code allow for, and RT fits this piece of property. We've got a motion and a second. We ready to vote? Call for the question. There we go. And that passes five to zero. Takes us down to general order item C, discussion of fiscal year budget and consideration of June 3rd as a date for the public hearing. Council have any other questions? We've heard had several budget presentations. Had opportunity to ask questions. Miss um, Alexander, if there are questions, will you be the one? Fine. Do we have any other questions that we want, or any changes we want for that proposed, but the, the published proposed budget? I do. You do. Okay. Is it okay? Just curious, Marcy, just to help me tie the fiscal years together in terms of the amount required from the SUA to fund the general budget. Mm -hmm. Is that requirement going up or down? Well, that's a good As question. A <clears throat> I believe it uh, looks like it is going up because of all the capital needs of the general fund, the different items that we've put in. I believe this last year it was in the 15 million range, and it looks like it's going up to 18.7 million. And you're attributing that to the capital needs of the general yeah. fund? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, that's a big picture question now, a little tiny picture question. Is there a splash pad in the budget? I don't believe there is a splash. There is not in There's the proposed not. budget, no, sir. No. Is there a, an increase in replacement of parks equipment? Yes. There is one playground, two, one, two, two playgrounds. Two playgrounds. Was it, yes. two, was it, was it 150 or 200,000? I, I mean, it was in that range, in that last capital request. It's playground, uh, playground equipment's two hundred and twenty-five thousand. That'll allow for two playgrounds to be updated. And that was that was up from the original. Right. Request. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The original request was one hundred twenty-five thousand. So, any changes to the documents that were sent to us? The ones that would be published for the public hearing. And again, just as a reminder, everyone, that's the proposed budget for the public hearing, not necessarily the one that gets voted on, but the starting point. Changes can still be made at the public hearing, but we have to have <coughs> something to publish. Comments that the public makes could be later incorporated into a revised plan, right? Yes, the documents that are in tonight are what we call the uh, attachment that would go with the resolution and the same uh, format as what we would publish in the paper so the public can come and talk about any item in the budget or propose additional items that may not be in the proposed document and you listen to that discussion and and then uh, counselors as well can still determine additional or changes to items as well as taking that input from the public once the council uh, reaches that consensus that the budget's ready to go then we would um, 
place on the agenda the resolution to actually uh, adopt that budget. Well, Mr. Mayor, if I understand what we're doing, I'd be happy to make a motion to uh, consider setting June 3rd, 2013 as the date of the public hearing to receive input on the, the budget as presented. I would second Mr. Weaver's motion. Second. Motion and second. And that's to actually set the public hearing for June 3rd. Mm -hmm. That's what yes, the request yes. is. Yes, sir. Okay. And that passes five to zero. All right. Takes us down to ordinances, and we have a uh, second reading on ordinance 3230. Mr. Dorman. An ordinance authorizing the extension of the lease agreement and operation and maintenance contract dated April 1, 1979, providing for citizen initiated referendum of said lease in accordance with section 4 2 of the Stillwater City Charter. Any question on this second reading? Mayor, I move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. And that passes five to zero. Takes us down to report from officers and boards. Uh, Mr. Dorman, before your part, I'd like to cancel or not call the executive sessions uh, two and three. Okay. So then the only request tonight would be for an executive session pursuant to 20, should be 25 OS subsection 307 B2 to discuss labor negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters Local 2095. Uh, so you're saying Mr. Galloway. <laughs> Mr. Blankenship, do you have anything? Just, just one thing this evening, Mayor. Um, uh, there's an opportunity on June 11th, which is uh, a Tuesday from uh, 1 to 2.30. The American Public Power Association is uh, offering a webinar on rate making for utility <coughs> boards and city councils. I know that we've had a fair amount of discussion uh, about that uh, in the recent past. So. Uh, if any of the council members are interested in um, sitting in on such a webinar, I'd be happy to make arrangements to to uh, to have that here uh, at City Hall. Uh, and it's although it's put on by the American Public Power Association, the um, philosophy or approach towards rate making applies to all of our uh, the utilities that we own. So uh, I've participated in uh, a number of programs by the APPA, and they've all been excellent. So. I would encourage it, but if you're interested, uh, let me know and I'll uh, schedule that. I'd be interested if uh, schedule would, too, so if, would you send the emails to contact with the dates and the times? I will do that. Huh. Wonderful. Okay. Anything from counselors? Not this time, sir. No. Mm -hmm. Prayers with all the people across the state. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. Uh, I, I just have a couple. The first. A congratulations to the City of Stillwater. Uh, Oklahoma Special Olympics has uh, presented the City of Stillwater with the Sinar Award, which is their highest volunteer award. Is that fair, Mr. Scott? Yes. For the work that uh, the city does each year for the last 30 years for hosting the Special Olympics. And while the city, the community, has done a lot of work and the city itself and city staff has done a lot of work and I'd like to specifically thank the city staff that puts in so much time and effort and specifically thank Mr. Jim Scott for the work that he has done on these projects also. So while the award says City of Stillwater, it really needs to read a lot of different people's names. So, but it's a very big award and we were very honored when they, they presented it to us uh, last week, two weeks ago at uh, the Special Olympics Summer Games. So anyway, congratulations and thank you for all that people do to make Special Olympics Summer Games a, a great event. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, tune in, KSPI 815. I'll be on talking with Bill Van Ness about what's going on in the city. So 815 on KSPI AM. And then quite possibly the more important things that we're going to do tonight is we need to thank or we need to say happy birthday to the twins. <laughs> yeah, he's over now. <laughs> it's your birthday later this week. So happy birthday to Vice Mayor Hopkins and Dan Blankenship. Thank you very happy much. birthday. Thank you. Thank you. So anything for upcoming meetings? 
Mr. Mayor, that was great. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. They, I, I don't know if they looked that much alike, but <laughs> it's uh, true. They did have <laughs> Anyway, okay, that takes us down. To, uh, uh, if we get a motion to go to executive session on item one on the agenda, I move, move to go to executive session on item one. Second. Okay. And I second it. We will move to executive session. I think Rob's talking to you.